I had to attend work. Therefore, I had to reschedule it. So sorry for the last minute change. Okay, so now um, let me get into what I plan to talk about. And I mentioned, uh, I maybe I'll mention it again. I have two cases today. Uh, and these are both cases that I have personally been involved in. One I have invested in. And uh, I will share these two stories with you. And then we can try and analyze. Therefore, figure out what is common across uh, startups which tend to succeed and what is common across startups which tend to fail. Okay. So I'll start with uh, the first one. Let me just share my screen. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, we can okay, see. Good. It. Thank you. One request, if you can switch on your videos, because only two people, you can only see two people right now. Uh, switch on your videos because it's a little disconcerting to be speaking to a black colored screen. Okay, so I'll talk about uh, why some startups uh, succeed and why, they, why some others fail. And it is based on this book, which you see here, Funding of Startup and Other Nightmares. Uh, sir, so will you point. share this uh, PPT also after the session? Ha, sure, sure, not a problem. There's no copyright, I won't charge you. You're welcome to use it. <laughs> Priyanka, you'll share it, I'll send it to you. Yes, yes, I'll do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you know, when these guys started off, um, they basically looked at trying to create an organized set of tuition centers for children in schools. Because, you know, in uh, tuition centers, typically, you know, when a child goes to a tutor, most of the time the child will be sitting uh, at the dining table of the tutor. And, you know, you'll have the pressure cooker whistling away in the uh, kitchen. You'll have the phone ringing repeatedly. You'll have somebody shouting in the background. So it's very, very disorganized. Quality is a question mark. And these guys said, look, since it is such a disorganized, unorganized kind of sector, let us try and organize it. So they said, okay, what we will do is we will create branded tuition centers. And they identified the location. In fact, they had a tie up with OYO rooms and they identified good rooms uh, within OYO's owned properties, not their franchise properties. And uh, what they did was they created a lot of digital content, animated plus other digital content for English and science, for these two subjects. And in the room, they would have, you know, about five, six laptops and kids from typically class two to eight would come there. They would sit on the laptops, they would learn, and they would also be a, a lady mentor who would guide them. Right? So this worked very well. And uh, these guys came to us and uh, they actually took funding from us. And I also funded them. I also put my money into them. So this is the background of these guys. Now, fundamental question. By the way, let's keep it interactive. Eh? If you want to interrupt me or if you want if you disagree somewhere with me, you're most welcome. On the uh, 22nd of March, 2020, all of you know what happened, right? What happened? Uh, sir, lockdown. Germany, lockdown. China happened, COVID happened, and therefore there was a lockdown, right? And suddenly, you know, you had a situation where kids don't go to school. Why the hell would they come to a tuition center? So there is mm -hmm. no way they'd come there. <clears throat> so suddenly, this business, which was actually doing very well, they had about 60 centers in Gurgaon by the time we invested. Suddenly, business came down to absolute zero. Absolute zero. Now, suddenly, there was panic. What the hell do we do? So, what these guys said was, okay, 
no problem you know these guys are fighters these uh, founders <clears throat> they said okay we will pivot and since we have a lot of digital content and we anyway have mentors the learning center that room we will make it available online so now kids would go online they would access the same digital content the mentor would also be available online and hopefully things would work out so from offline given the existing content they moved to online okay now the problem is they were competing with giants and today byju's is not a giant it's a very troubled company but at that time i am talking of uh, 2020 2020 and uh, maybe early 2021 these were absolute giants now suddenly you know you had giants like byju's vedantu etc 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 and you had this little tiny little guy called uh, planet spark there is no way they could compete okay so you had a problem so what these guys said was okay what we will do is we will not compete head on with byju's instead what we will do is we'll pivot again and rather than look at looking at curriculum we will now look at extra curricular learning by the way this is the logo for planet spark what you see on the right so they tried uh, things like uh, programming they tried music they tried painting they tried robotics uh, they kept pivoting they tried various things they tried acting drawing unfortunately nothing worked nothing worked right so business simply refused to pick up yes they had a little bit of revenue but nowhere near uh, you know what was required but i think the most important thing and please remember this when i come to the analysis these guys kept persevering they didn't give up they said okay we'll keep pivoting keep pivoting keep pivoting and finally they hit upon one area which is not curricular related which is extra curricular which worked and they said we will now uh, help people in doing public speaking and we'll aim at the same kids class 2 to 8 you know if you look at uh, typical school going children obviously parents uh, would want them to do well uh, but doing well unfortunately seems to be restricted to getting good marks so it's good it's important to get good marks and priyanka you can see her nodding her head very very vigorously so she agrees with me um but that's not enough in life you have to be able to face people you have to be able to talk to people you have to be able to face a crowd convince them that's public speaking uh so that's as important maybe even more important than getting marks right so these guys launched this public speaking and suddenly it boomed okay and it boomed uh and i will not tell you where it has reached today we'll come to that at the end of the analysis but let me ask you one question if you were investors and i'm talking of somewhere around uh, 2021 so about two and a half years ago right? two or three years ago okay if you are investors and i assume many of you are would you have invested in this business or not i'm not talking of the tuition centers now i'm talking of the new business the public speaking for kids why or why not so i will now stop here and you guys please give me reasons and just saying yes or no is not enough eh? you have to give me reasons professor i could have co invested in this startup with the experienced investor like you or other who has got the good track record okay. uh, considering i'll not bet completely or fully uh, because things tends to go wrong public speaking you children may need it may not need it when covid will finish okay the again physical activity will start so i'll test the things with the smaller checks with the co investment and then 6 months down the line year down the line if i am confident on the founders capability and the market i could participate in second round okay wonderful so you will be investing obviously yes. initially at the at an early stage it is usually angel investing and there the amounts involved are small it could be as low as 2 uh, and 1/2 lakhs or 5 lakhs or maybe 10 lakhs right so valid good good yogesh 
So Yogesh gets this. Thank you so much, and Professor. And Thank you so much. And I'll get it when I meet you. No, 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 no. I'll tell you. You will meet separately. I have sent a full carton to Priyanka. So please make sure that she gives it to you because she has a tendency to eat all of them. <laughs> okay, I'll, 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 I'll check with okay. Priyanka. Anybody else? The other... Uh, anybody else who would or would not... Yeah, Professor, if you, yeah. If, if you allow me to go, uh, yeah, Dhruv sir, I may not... So I, I'm not, I may not, I'm not have business, sir. Just call me Dhruv. Yeah. Uh, cool, uh, Dhruv. In fact, that's what you know, I wanted to. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I may not have invested, considering that it was uh, the period you are saying, uh, there was no public, leave alone meeting, because it was COVID and everything was banned. So I may not have invested at that time. I am not confident of saying that I would have stuck to the decision because I might be continuing to watch, probably at a later stage. But definitely at that point in time, no investment. Okay, good. Because there was um, no public. Can we have one more person uh, sharing his views and then I'll come to what actually yeah. happened? Uh, uh, I, I, you you yeah. in the company. So you Sorry? want to share? I know you're driving, but if you can. Sorry? Piyush Jain invested in the company, I know. Oh, so he's there. Just share? <laughs> oh, he's there. Okay. No, yeah, he's, he's driving. He just his hand. I am there. And then we get Piyush. Yeah. I am there, Dhruv. Yeah, so Venu, if you could, uh, uh, Venu Gopal. So I, I, I have. Yeah. 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 Sure. 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 Can I, can I go please, 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 boss. Yeah. So, so like I would not have considered this for an investment for the reason, one major reason that you quoted during your introductory for this company. As Indian parent, my focus is more on what score the child is getting rather than public speaking, rather than any extracurricular. So the focus is primarily on education and academic. And uh, extracurricular is always secondary. It's not the primary thing. So oh. I would have focused more on that part. And probably now the times have changed. So people do want extracurricular or uh, such uh, capabilities. So probably if some similar investment comes up later in six months or one year's time, probably I may be, have a different view. Oh, okay. End point which you said, like oh. I would have probably not considered this seriously. Oh. It has come up, but at a much higher valuation now. So, by the way, you also get this. Priyanka, please note. Thank you. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. And you actually invested. So I, uh, I have actually invested and uh, um, I would have again invested. Uh, my thesis is as follows. One is the... Uh, I, any idea is good or bad as good as the execution capabilities of founders. Mm -hmm. And if the founders can, can keep pivoting and not giving up, I know for sure that these guys will stay afloat and they will come out uh, with this trouble. If not today, two years down the line, but they will come out for sure. That is number one. Uh, number two, I, uh, I am a big fan of EdTech, uh, otherwise as well. And I feel... In, in today's world, public speaking is one of the most important uh, skill which most of us also lacks. I mean, I have seen people, chartered accountants, CFOs of the companies doing very well, but if you were to tell them to go and speak at a stage, mm. they would not like to. They would, they would write wonderful theses and reports. Mm. Mm. So I feel our kids, the next generation kids, and especially the way India is growing, I always feel this is the most important thing which will make difference. Okay. So I would have again invested in this. Wonderful. So in addition to the appreciation which you've got, you also get a Kit Kat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Coincidentally, okay. I'm in Bombay on 17th. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay. So what I will now talk about is what I had briefly mentioned. Uh, if you remember, this is the book that we wrote, uh, Funding of Startup and Other Nightmares, which is jointly written by me and Sushanto. And you can see Sushanto sipping his beer. Uh, Sushanto, that's beer or something stronger? Funny. <laughs> Coffee. Sushanto, I believe you are on mute. No matter. No matter. We can see Explosers mock though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> one of the other company which we are uh, uh, which is persisting and, and doing well. Yeah. No, this is 
you know, this uh, Planet Spark has been one of our stars, that lead angel, one of our star investments. So let me take you through uh, what, I, you know, I mentioned the framework. It's called the persistent framework. Some of you may already be familiar with this. Uh, this is actually an acronym where each letter stands for something. So I'll take you through these letters one by one. And we'll try and analyze the uh, this particular company. So first of all, are you solving a problem, right? Um, if you're not solving a problem, boss, very simply, you don't have a business, <laughs> right? Here, clearly, they're solving a problem because they are helping children to become ready for the world by giving them the confidence to be able to face a crowd, to be able to talk to people, to face a job interview. So clearly, they were solving a problem. So P is taken care of. The second letter is E, which stands for earnings model. And obviously, not only should you be solving a problem for somebody, but that somebody has to be willing to pay you for it. If not, because you're running a charity, you're not running a business, you have to make money somewhere, right? Clearly here, if parents found it worthwhile, they would be willing to pay. So that's not a problem. Earnings model is not an issue. Third is size of the market. Now, this is extremely important uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, if you have a small market, then obviously as a, as a company, as a startup, you will stagnate, right? And some stage will stagnate because there is no more market. Where the hell do you grow? So size of the market here is, if you look at it, it's actually the, probably the entire middle class, right, of India. Uh, and you're talking of what, about... 40, 40 crore middle class. Within them, uh, you look at school going kids between classes two and eight. So that's, I guess, about uh, how much? 15 crores? That's a huge market. It's a phenomenal market, right? So size of the market, absolutely no issue. However, sometimes you have a very large market, but you have a crowded market. And if you look at their first pivot, right, when they started offering English and science uh, online, it was a crowded market. What's a crowded market? Anyone? Uh, crowded? Too many With multiple Lots of companies, players. That's right. Multiple players, absolutely. Multiple competitors. So I mentioned, you know, EdTech at that time, it was booming. Baiju's, Vedantu, God knows how many others. I'm sure you can list out 15 other guys and big guys. And here was a tiny guy called Planet Spark who was trying to compete in the same space. So the problem is when you are in a large market, but it is crowded, ideally what you should do is you should identify a subset of that market. And that subset has to satisfy two requirements. Number one, it has to be non-crowded. And number two, it itself has to be large enough. Otherwise, again, you'll stagnate. right? And I will call that subset a niche. So identify a niche. And these guys identified a niche within the edtech space, which is public speaking, not crowded. There was nobody in the space, at least no big player. And it was large enough because, again, your uh, entire market was that same 15 crore middle class Indian population uh, going to school. All right. So you have the first four, which is P, E, S, and N. And, and by the way, you're welcome to interrupt me at any stage. The next one is scalability. And incidentally, uh, for those who are founders uh, on this, uh, in this session, I must tell you one of the most important areas, one of the most uh, talked about areas in startups is this issue of scalability. And unfortunately, a lot of founders have got it wrong. Investors who have burnt their fingers now get it right. But initially, many of them also got it wrong. So we need to understand scalability. And my question to all you, all of you guys is, what is scalability? I mean, how do you define scalability? And why is it important, A, for the business, and B, for the potential investor? And the uh, good answers will get this. By the way, Priyanka, is everybody here an adult? Or any kids here? No? Sir, I'm a kid. Okay. So <laughs> Hanuman, apart from Hanuman, anybody else? Oh, Deva, is Devang around? Devang is 14 years old. Is he around? I don't know. Uh, 
So if it is all adults, hang on here. Yeah. Why the hell am I giving you Kit Kats? I'll give you this. Good answer. <laughs> and again, it is Priyanka has one carton of this. Huh? So please catch her. This, so this is a lie. I, 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 a Kit Kat I'll vouch for, but beers, no. <laughs> and, and being in Punjab, she lives in Chandigarh, her appetite for alcohol is fairly huge. Okay. So yeah, now tell me, what is uh, scalability? And why is it important? So first of all, what is scalability? Can we explain this? Anyone? And let me dangle this. Okay. Professor, scalability uh, can be where you can increase your uh, volume of sales okay. to capture the major market share to become the leader. And it is important once you become a leader, let's say with the 20% of shares, there are two, three market leaders, majority of the business will come to you. And as you as you rightly mentioned, our earning model has to be there. So that could give a lot of possibility to make the money. That could be with so the help of tech. One condition for getting either a Kit Kat or a or a beer is you have to show your face. Okay, okay. I, I was just roaming around. <laughs> okay. Just no, no, you show, show show a video of you roaming <laughs> around. I have no problem. Okay. So your okay. your Kit Kat still video. works, huh? <laughs> Sorry? So now now it works? Huh. Now it works. So I will okay. give Yogesh one slice of this. Yogesh, you get one slice. This right. is not the complete answer. It's a partial answer, which what you said is valid. Anybody else you want to add to that? Uh, so, so according, uh, scalability, according to what I understood is, uh, I think uh, your ability to acquire more business, more customer or to hold more stakeholders in your business. Uh, okay. So you will share the same slice with Yogesh. Again, it is valid. <laughs> you said the same thing in a different way, boss. Anybody else? So, Something else? Uh, was... uh, so, uh, yeah, Anirban. Anirban, come. Yeah. yeah. So scalability can be uh, defined as uh, like uh, where you increase your business and your operational expenses are at the same time low with the same thing. Like when you increase your business and your operational expenses do not increase that much, that's, I mean, it decreases. That's where uh, you think a okay, company good. is scalable. Good. You get another slice. Okay. So, uh, Hydro, sir, I can add to this point. Yeah. Uh, scalability. Who's yeah, so, Neeraj, is it? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Oh, Neeraj. Yes. Oh, you're looking like a pilot with this. <laughs> yeah, sir. It's obviously <laughs> after a long time. Uh, Hello, sir. Anji, bolo. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the scalability is uh, giving the same product in a consistent manner uh, with a standard operating procedure set uh, every time and at any place. So if I'm getting a product, uh, say a burger in India or a burger in US, the standard operating procedures for that outlet is such that I get the same quality of product uh, everywhere. It is scalable. Uh -huh. I can deliver to one customer also, 100 customers also, 1,000 also, oh. and maybe uh, 10,000 okay. also. Yeah. So quality. I'll give you two slices. So Priyanka, please note all these people. Uh, you have to split this and package it. So each person <laughs> gets one or two slices. Huh? So let me just no, add no. something. Can I, I, can, I add, can I also add yeah. something? Yes, I have one more person. Yeah. Okay. Rahul. Rahul. Yes, yeah. I also yeah. want to add because everybody is talking about the business and you, you know. Also want this, Bolo. Yeah, I also want <laughs> beyond KitKat. I also want to add oh. some things because <laughs> Bolo was so that you know beyond you know market reach and growth. I think there are other aspects which are organizationally important for you to be scalable. Scalable one is flexibility that you how uh, easy are you able to you know adapt to the market conditions, mm -hmm. and the second is not only for your business to run your organizational infrastructure, technological and organizational infrastructure also has to be very scalable. Because that is your the foundation, your 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 team, your employee also helps you make it more scalable. So okay. that is the kind so, of another perspective which I think is very critical. Okay. So good. All of you, I mean, you either get one slice or you get one two sips of this. <laughs> so Priyanka, you can just apportion the sips. Yeah. So can so, I? Uh... Yeah, boss. Yeah. Let's have the last person after which I'll just have to proceed. Otherwise, we'll. So, uh, not all it. businesses are scalable. Okay. Great. Uh, scalability uh, applies where uh, you, once the 
basic uh, model is in place, it can actually uh, exponentially grow with limited, uh, uh, you know, uh, incremental investment. Ah, uh, now you're getting closer. So I will give you two thirds of this. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So I don't let, me, drink. <laughs> let me explain scalability first. Yeah, let me explain. Everybody, all of you are right, by the way. Nobody is wrong. Right? Size of the market tells you how big the market yeah. is. Scalability tells you, can you grow within that big market or not? That's scalability. However, there has been a change in that definition. 30 years ago, scalability <laughs> would have been defined as, can you grow within that market? Piyush, you are somewhere... You have skyscrapers next to you. <laughs> yes, this is walk. I'm just walking in my parking now. <laughs> achha, achha. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Please keep that on. It's a nice view. So, <laughs> so once upon a time, scalability was defined as the ability to grow. But today that has changed. It has become the ability to grow fast. And I think that's one term which I was expecting from people. I didn't get it, which is why so far nobody's got a full can of beer. So let me explain this. You know, you must remember uh, in the internet world, see, before the internet came in, your competitors were local, your clients were local. Okay. Because typically you would uh, uh, take care of clients who would have access to you, which meant maybe the same locality or maybe the same city. With the internet coming in, uh, suddenly your clients can be anywhere. You could be sitting in Delhi and your client can be in Kerala, right? Similarly, you can be sitting in Delhi, your competitor can be sitting in Kerala and he can compete for your clients who are sitting anywhere in the country. Okay. Because of this, what has happened is the, the ability for internet businesses to grow has become phenomenal. The opportunity is huge. And those who grow big, I think somebody mentioned this, those who grow big tend to become bigger. Those who grow small tend to become, you know, either get uh, sidelined or they die or they get, uh, uh, you know, sold out or whatever, right? So now the important issue is if you don't grow big fast, the other guy, guy will grow faster than you and potentially he will either kill you or he'll eat you up. That is why the ability to grow fast becomes very, very important in the world of the internet. Not true 50 years ago. You could have grown slowly, not a problem, right? For the investor, so that's for the uh, uh, business. For the investor, why is scalability important? Very, very simple. You know, as Fine. an investor, I always have the option of investing in the stock market. And without taking too much risk, I can invest in blue chip companies like HDFC Bank or, you know, Reliance or LNT or Hindustan Lever, and I will still get my 15, 16% returns per year, right? Or very low risk long term and 100% liquidity. Please remember, 100% liquidity, very low risk. You're investing in blue chips and you're still getting 15, 16%. Now imagine a startup comes to an investor and says, hey, boss, by the way, Priyanka, anybody who doesn't understand Hindi, because sometimes I switch to Hindi. Is there anybody in this group who doesn't understand Hindi? Please let me know. Because some of my jokes will be in Hindi. Okay. So now the uh, the uh, startup comes to the invest. Hey, boss, I've got a brilliant uh, opportunity for you. Invest in my startup and I will give you 15, 20% returns per year. What will the investor say? No. If he's polite, he will simply say, Please jaiye, let go. If he's not polite, he will use some terms which I cannot use on this because, you know, it's a, it's a public forum. For the very simple reason that if you're investing in a startup, number one, your risks are very, very high. And number two, you're completely illiquid. You will not, the investor will not be able to sell his shares till another investor comes along and buys his shares. And that can happen two years, three years, six years, maybe never. Okay. So therefore, because he's investing in something which is high risk and illiquid, he expects far higher returns. And those far higher returns you cannot get if you're only growing at 15-20% per year, which is why 
rapid growth is important also for the investor. I hope that's clear. So both for the business and for the investor, scalability is important. Now the issue is what determines scalability? And some of you have mentioned that and you guys are right. I just want to take a couple of simple examples. And I'll take the example of a software uh, services company like Infosys. Okay. Uh, although let's not take Infosys, it's a huge company. Uh, let's take maybe a smaller software services company, maybe with about 400 programmers. Let me ask you guys, how scalable is this company? Does it satisfy our definition of scalability? Yes, no, and why? Anyone? With the headcount of 400, it would be difficult for the company to take on additional business and grow. So okay. they'll be able to probably hold steady state, but uh, if they have to suddenly acquire a new client and ramp up the team, it will take a while. Okay, wonderful. Which one? Kit Kat. <laughs> Priyanka, I'm very disappointed today. <laughs> People only seem to want Kit Kats. <laughs> okay. You can show some nice whiskey. Now you see the answers pouring in. <laughs> oh, whiskey, yeah, I have whiskey. No, no, but I haven't sent you whiskey. I've only sent you a carton of beer and Kit Kat. Na? So, okay. So, you're absolutely right, Anjali. Um, you know, you must see the key issue is the key issue is the Infosys business is a manpower dependent business. If you have to double revenues in one year, you have to double programmers, manpower. which means you have to double manpower, you have to double the infrastructure, the buildings, the uh, you know the uh, the workstations, the uh, cubicles, the laptops, the AC, everything, right? And doubling, tripling, which is what scalability really implies, is not possible so fast. So the problem is whenever you have a business which is heavily dependent on manpower and infrastructure, it is not a scalable business. I want to clarify one thing. I'm not saying Infosys is a bad business. It's a wonderful business. All I'm saying is, in today's world of the internet, looking at the kind of growth we are talking about, uh, it is not a scalable business. That's all I'm saying. Okay? Now let me take a parallel. Look at something like Make My Trip. How scalable is that? Or a smaller travel portal. How scalable is that? Very scalable. I think. Very scalable. Very scalable because it's a technology dependent business, not a manpower dependent business. To double revenues, triple revenues, you do not need to add, you do not need to triple or triple manpower or infrastructure, right? So please remember this one thing. Technology driven businesses are much more scalable, scalable. than manpower and infrastructure dependent businesses. And that's something which as investors, those of you who are investors, you need to remember. And that's something we have learned at, uh, at uh, Lead Angels. So now, I want to clarify one more thing. Important. And, you know, this is uh, aimed at all the founders out there. And I suspect there are some many founders as well. You know, a lot of founders have come to me and it's very obvious their business is not scalable. But they say, how do we get funding? I say, boss, you don't get funding. You don't need funding. You do not necessarily need to be a scalable business. Your business may not be scalable. Therefore, it will not be investable, but it can still be highly viable. Infosys sure. is a huge viable business. A Kirana shop is a very viable business. There's no problem, right? But it is not investable. So to the founders out there, please remember, you may have a business which is highly viable, which is profitable, which may be growing gradually or may not be growing at all. You may be stagnant. That's okay as long as you're making a profit. Kirana shop. But you may not be investing. All right. So please remember that. So now the question is how scalable is Planet Spark? And I suspect the answer is obvious. How scalable is it? Yeah, it's a digital product. So it's scalable. scalable. Online entirely brother, product, the yeah, product entirely internet, entirely technology. It they have a lot of content. The only one area which pulls it down slightly is that they have mentors, and that's a human angle. Now the only thing is getting mentors for people, uh, you know, to speak English uh, fluently. 
uh, is far far easier uh, and in any case these are on contract they are not employees so it's not it's much easier than the software company doubling from 400 to 800 therefore it is a very highly scalable business right and therefore uh, at least from the scalability point of view very highly investable okay next is risks uh, obviously uh, every sir, business... i have a question sir yeah boss please uh, sir you talked about the infrastructure manpower and technology and what about the product based uh, business mm. like uh... Uh, so they are uh, means uh, sourcing and uh, selling it in their uh, brand name wonderful are... wonderful sanfe is it uh, archit yeah archit agarwal uh, in delhi ah uh, you you know archit is it uh, sir when they started uh, the uh, you know just interacted uh, at that time uh, i was also so in the undergraduate I must, i must tell you we guys at lead angel almost invested in sanfe finally we didn't but then everybody was very excited because we were told that deepika padukone was planning to invest in it so we said hum bhi karenge okay uh, unfortunately then we came to know she has nothing to do with it one of her fund managers will do it and that's the only guy we will speak to so we said nothing doing we are not investing anyways so you are absolutely right a product business is scalable because a product business is not manpower dependent so for example microsoft very highly scalable right uh, uh oracle very highly scalable yes if the product requires a very hefty manufacturing setup you know lot of investment then the quantum of money that needs to go in as investment to set up additional factories that makes it less scalable but otherwise product businesses tend to be much more scalable than pure manpower driven service business Sir, but uh, still, why you haven't invested in Sanfe? You find oh, that's an old story. Old story. Okay. Uh, some some day I'll meet you over coffee and tell you. Oh, yes. This was very very. Early. They came to us very early. I think Archit at that time was in his third year in IIT, and yeah. uh, our feeling was in third the, year. Uh, no, they started in the second year. We said, "These are kids. They are kids. I mean, <laughs> let Sir, them but, develop." But uh, he was mentored by Pratik, who started uh, Nano Clean. i came to know it uh, very later when i uh, meet uh, pratik sir yeah so, so you know, told that you know, he was mentoring that is why you were able to do right okay. things in a yeah. minimum time he uh, scaled up so we looked at his products we were not very comfortable with yeah. his products we didn't know whether they would do well or not and yes these mistakes these uh, decisions do take place sometimes you miss out great opportunities this is a great opportunity but at that stage the product that he had see his key product at that time when we spoke to him many many years ago was in these uh, it was reusable sanitary napkins and we realized that those napkins were not likely to sell but what he is now selling and what he is now producing is a different category of product in the women's hygiene uh, space and this is done very very well so yes we did miss out but that happens that happens okay so uh, you know i talked about risks and one of the biggest risks uh, is the risk of competition getting in and because you have competition you need an entry barrier entry barrier should be very obvious your business there is something within this business which prevents your competitor from coming in and pulling out your customers okay that's an entry barrier and obviously if you have a highly innovative solution it's an entry barrier uh, if you have a patent a wonderful entry barrier if you have you know a complex piece of software which will take the other guy one year one and a half years to build that's an entry barrier because you have a head start of about a year and a half so these are all potential entry barriers i want to clarify one thing uh, my son is a lawyer by the way and i have had lots of discussions with him on patents uh, i i just want to make one interesting statement many people have come to me and said sir we have a patent please remember patents are valid for those who respect patents i presume you understand what i mean right if you been in delhi you have an area called okla and okla okla industrial estate it's called right and you have people operating out of little sheds completely unorganized sector you may be able, uh, may have got a patent for some product but it's easy to make and that guy sitting in the shed in okla is happily making it you tell him boss patented patent what is that i don't know what to patent he'll keep making it 
you want to file a case against him you file <laughs> you pay legal fees and you fight for 3 years so please remember patents are valid uh, for the organized sector for example large companies lnt hindustan lever hdfc bank these guys will not go against patents you are safe there but the chotu operating out of shed in some industrial uh, uh, part of some city please remember a patent will not protect you for example suppose you have, you you created a cooler uh, you know a desert cooler you have so many of these coolers uh, getting made in okla nobody is respecting any patents right so please remember patents are something which um, uh, are valid for people who respect patents okay question now is given this entry barrier what kind of entry barrier does planet spark have is it a strong entry barrier a weak entry barrier what is it tell me and again i have this so if an entry barrier require more time effort or money like to do that innovation it requires uh, a lot of money just like in the uh making chips or some uh, very complex circuit it will take more time research and development lot of investment then huh. so i am asking about planet spark time sir right so i am asking about planet spark does it have a strong entry barrier or a weak entry barrier anyone uh, depends on the cost of technology barrier. depends on the cost of technology cost of technology any okay. any builder can replicate that easily as okay. long as the technology is easily available okay uh prashant you'd like to you share something but first you have to sh show us your face so my video laptop video is not working otherwise I so you are four people it. there which of them is prashant prashant bafna sir here yeah. <laughs> there are four people in the photograph carry okay. on okay go ahead go ahead okay i felt uh, i feel at that point of time they had a entry barrier because they had a content ready in the okay. covid time which nobody else had okay so i think at that point of time they had a upper hand okay great so actually planet spark over the years has been able to build up a very strong entry barrier why first of all they have a very large amount of content which they build over the past 4 years okay and that is not something the other guy can easily copy it takes time number one number two they are using more and more tech so increasingly the role of the mentor see them i told you they have mentors that's human that's a human uh, they are using ai artificial intelligence to do a first level evaluation of what the student has said the first level obviously not detailed evaluation but first level that takes time to build okay that's your entry barrier now they have scale and i will just come to what uh, where they reach they are market leaders by the way uh, and they have a fairly strong brand they have word of mouth all these make it tough for the next guy who's coming in to copy them yes if you have a giant so let's say a giant like byju's assuming they had been in better financial uh, uh, state than they actually are today uh, byju's will still take a lot of time to copy them if they wanted to get into the space but the other option is they could buy out planet spark and that's also a good option right so these guys have a fairly strong entry barrier as of today and it's constantly growing all the time because they are market leaders okay uh, last two things first of all uh, the t the last second last t is team and team starts with the founders and you know i don't need to say too much just go back to their history they never gave up they kept trying kept trying kept trying kept trying i think the ninth or 10th thing worked and today it's booming right so you know we have a saying in our industry in the world of startups at an early stage you frankly don't know what direction the business will take therefore we depend far more on the invest sorry on the founder than on the uh, business so a great founder if the business has to change if, if he has to pivot he'll figure out a way to make it work okay and these were great founders finally the last t what is the final proof you may have a wonderful entry barrier great scalability or solving a problem what's final proof kya hota hai in any business ability to monetize ability to monetize absolutely which one boss stephen i'm good sir thank you i thank you both 
I only want. <laughs> Don't be greedy. <laughs> okay. So absolute detraction. Are you getting customers? Are they giving you revenues? Are your revenues increasing uh, month on month, quarter and quarter? That's traction. And just to give you a little background, look at their traction. And this is as of about two months, three months ago. Their revenue today is about 100 crores a year. Okay. They have 20,000 students currently. Okay. Interestingly, they have gone into the global market because see, just, just look at the beauty of what's happened. When they were doing curriculum-based learning, their market was restricted to India because every country will have its own curricula, right? But now what they're doing has nothing to do with curriculum and therefore their market is beyond India. So <laughs> they have a lot of uh, customers in the US. They have a lot of customers in the UK, even in the non-English speaking countries in Europe. And of course, Australia, the other English speaking countries as well. So they have uh, customers globally. And please remember the amount they can charge for a customer in the US or UK is much higher than the rupee paying customer in India, although their costs are still the same because the cost of development of, of the product is still the same. The cost of the mentor is still the same. The mentors are based in India, right? So the profitability suddenly starts shooting up. They also have adult customers now. So now it's not restricted only to kids. Yeah. They are not uh, profitable yet, but their cash burn has been reducing dramatically. And I think I was talking to the founders in January and okay. he says, in the second half of this year, we should definitely uh, turn profitable. Okay. So now I just want to summarize one more thing before I close this first case. What do, you know, I've talked about what successful uh, startups have in common. Uh, the question is, what do investors look for before putting in their hard-earned money? Unit economics should be positive. So that's a point, right? It's positive, valid. So by the way, that's part of the earnings model. You're right. Definitely. You're right. Okay. What else? Uh, sir, what if the customers are increasing, but uh, revenue is not there initially or in the first, second so, years? Like if we can see about yeah, so, top. So initially, companies may decide to offer the service or the product at either free or at a discount. And in fact, a lot of SaaS-based companies do that. They say you use our product and within three months, after three months, if you're happy, continue to use it, then we'll charge you per month. That's also possible. But traction typically says that uh, you are getting customers and over time, your revenues are increasing. May not be in month one, maybe in month three, maybe month six. So as traction, revenues, what else? Uh, as you said about scalability, investors look for highly scalable businesses. Perfect. So actually, if you look at it, investors also look for exactly the same thing, isn't it? Persistent yes. businesses. Definitely. Please remember, investors and founders are on the same side of the table. Both of them want successful, fast-growing businesses, businesses which are making money, right? So everybody looks for a uh, persistent business. So that's the persistent model, and that's Planet Spark. What I will do is, before I... Sir, can uh, I just uh, ask you a question? Yes, yeah, please, please, please. So, you know, here's a business which has done well, uh, scaled up to 100 crores, yeah. but is not yet profitable. Yeah. Right? Now, uh, would you therefore call this truly as a scalable, as, as a business at scale? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. I will give you two cans. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you. <laughs> I hope you have here. I'm good, sir. Thank you. <laughs> no, that doesn't answer my question. <laughs> doesn't drink. Oh, you, you don't? Okay, so no, no. If you don't drink, Priyanka, I'll finish it. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> okay, wonderful question. Wonderful question. So I need to, I need to go back into a little background first. Right? This is history. I must tell you, for 20 years, I was a professor. So it's very easy for me to start talking. I don't know where to stop. So this is going to be a slightly long answer. You know, when the internet came in, I've already told you that rapid growth was the key. Okay? Because you grow rapidly and you survive, you become dominant and, you know, the other guys are either killed or they're lapped up by you and so on. And that's you can see that in today's um, 
uh, e-commerce companies, there are only two or three. You yeah. can see that in the delivery companies, food delivery, they again only two. You can yeah. see that in uh, travel companies, they're only about four or five, right? So at that stage, what happened was rapid growth of internet companies became the key. And investors, they said, okay, we will pump money. We'll keep pumping money into companies which are growing rapidly and getting into a position of dominance. Once they become dominant, hopefully at some stage they will make a profit. Right now, we don't care. Just focus on dominance. So companies kept growing, kept losing money. In many cases, the, the quantum of money kept increasing, the money that they were losing. But they kept growing, they kept becoming dominant. So the investors kept piling on the money. Over time, what has happened is investors have realized that this is not a, it's not sustainable. I mean, this cannot carry on forever. At some stage, a company has to become profitable. You can't say, look, you know, I, I remember uh, this Rakesh Junjunwala, the, the very, very famous uh, big bull of the Indian stock market. He once said, he says, how can your uh, profit be the next round of funding? But it was profit has to come from within the company, not from investors. So investors realized over time that this was going too far and this constant loss making was not working, number one. Number two, what happened in the last four or five years was COVID came, you know, potential recession in many Western economies, US interest rates going up, Ukraine-Russia war. Now they are talking of uh, potential uh, Iran-Israel war. So for multiple reasons, money became a little more scarce and investors said, okay, we will uh, be a little careful about investing in risky startups and that too in developing countries okay and that started happening but i think this is very very important and sushanta will bear me out you know this has been called the funding winter but i think i must clarify for the right company funding has not been a problem what does the right company mean investors have said look if you're constantly loss making and your losses are only ballooning all the time, your cash burn constantly keeps increasing, we are not interested. You prove to us that you are on a path to profitability. I think that's the key, path to profitability, uh, which means your cash burn has to be coming down with time. You show me that and I'm willing to invest in you. Planet Spark, I must tell you, uh, got their next round of funding, the latest round of funding it's an edtech company and edtech has a very, very bad name today. But they got their next round of, round of funding as a loss-making company about six months ago. Okay. And by the way, this was at a valuation which is about 130 times the original uh, valuation that the first investor got. 130 times. So they got money. They had no problem. Why? Because their cash burn has been reducing and they are on a path to profitability. So I think the key there, and uh, in answer to Stephen's question, uh, you're absolutely right. If you're constantly loss-making, your cash burn is not coming down, you will not get money. But today, if you're on a path to profitability, you can show that somewhere in one year, one and a half years, two years, you will ultimately become EBITDA positive, maybe ultimately overall positive. Investors are lining up and waiting to invest in you. So not a problem. I hope that answers the question. Yes. Thank okay. you. Sure. Okay. So let me just close this one. I will quickly take up the next guy. Uh, yeah. Now, this is an interesting company which failed. <laughs> this company failed and we did not put wet money gift. into it, fortunately. Wet gift. Yeah. Well, wet I've changed the name. The original name was different. I don't want to share that because it's a failure. I have changed the name. This is the name I have used in the book, in this book. So, you know, I'll just start off. The problem with weddings. What is the problem with weddings? So normally, when I make this statement, all the married people in the audience start laughing. <laughs> Wedding itself. Right. I must clarify, I have no solution to those problems. I am facing the same problems as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to focus on the problem with wedding gifts. What oh. is the problem with wedding gifts? Anyway, you stuff not which are not of value to 
absolutely useless i mean you said it very very politely was useless gifts and duplicate gifts okay absolutely utterly useless so just to give you an example uh, so let's say uh, yogesh uh, is a friend of mine and i am getting married and yogesh gives me a gift and an utterly useless gift completely useless <laughs> what will i say firstly i'll say kitna kamina hai okay what the hell is this here i mean itna useless gift then i'll start wondering acha yaar now what the hell do i do oh Recycle. priyanka absolutely priyanka is getting married i pass it on to priyanka so yeah. what does priyanka do <laughs> she will give me galis kitna kamina hai dhru right and then she'll start figuring out acha who is the next raj oh i'll pass it on to raj so you know this is a cyclical industry as you know the gifts go in one direction and abuses galis go in the opposite direction okay so cyclical industry fortunately in the western world not in india there is a solution to this and i assume you guys have uh, some of you are familiar are you familiar with this concept wedding gift registry yes yeah priyanka you tried it i've tried it but i've got a lot of cash so i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> priyanka has you know her mattress is not made up of the way normal mattresses are it's made up of 2000 rupee notes okay so you know this is a concept of a wedding gift registry uh, which is basically very simple it's an e-commerce site like amazon or flipkart except it's smaller and you know a typical e-commerce site will have uh, all kinds of items you can buy soap you can buy detergent you can buy books everything but on a wedding gift registry e-commerce site you will only have gift items vouchers vouchers uh vouchers possible yes but you will also have gifts <clears throat> so you will have things like you know coffee mugs um uh, dining uh, uh, sorry dining sets tea sets uh table mats you know linen wall clocks paintings all these kinds of typical gift items so what happens is the couple that is getting married before they get married they actually go to the site and out of all these possible gift items they select the ones that they want and these are then put into what is called a wish list and that wish list is a page a web page on the uh, wedding gift registry site now for young people today people normally don't use physical cards right wedding invitation cards young people will send e cards or whatsapp cards right and every card that they send will have a link and where will that link point to the wish list to the wish list exactly exactly so such a simple answer so no no uh, error for this so and then you know the the guest can go there and look at all these items and say ah coffee mug okay i'll take this coffee mug so they buy that coffee mug it is nicely gift wrapped and a week or two weeks after the wedding it is delivered to the um, to the couple you also have another option where there's a stall set up just outside the wedding so the guest walks in identifies which gift he bought and then hands it over to the couple so at least the couple gets the gift that they want it okay and this is just to summarize this uh, very popular in the west but not common in india so we had a uh, we had a a uh, husband wife team of founders they came to us with this uh, company and they wanted funding and i must tell you the wife was the one who was leading this company and she was absolutely brilliant you know when i talk of team of founders we couldn't ask for a better person very knowledgeable extremely uh, cued in regarding the business she knew exactly what she was doing she knew the business like the back of her hand right so these guys came to us but we didn't fund them and i need to explain why so first of all let me just skip this because i think we are running slightly short of time first of all there is a cultural issue and you have to tell me what that is what is the cultural issue here uh, sir uh, i think one cannot ask uh, 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 for the gift when we are inviting so Wonderful, wonderful. You know, 
that's the whole point so i'll give you a typical uh, uh, conversation between uh, father and daughter or mother and daughter and let me assume priyanka is getting married she is my daughter and i'm talking to priyanka uh, by the way this is past history she is already married so i talk to priyanka and i'm the mother or father and you know what i'll say and i'll say this in hindi it's a little more expressive actually punjabi would be even better but i will say it in hindi to pagal ho gayi hai to give demand kar rahi hai what is the next statement sari biradari mein kya ho jayega naak kat jayegi <laughs> see the daughter is replied you know absolutely i think paris mentioned this in the west it's perfect to demand the gift in india you can crib like hell when you get the wrong gift but you can't demand it the cultural issue right i remember recently uh, two years ago there is a, a class fellow of mine uh, his son was getting married and the son and the and his fiance they said we want to use this concept and you know what his mother said the wife of my class fellow she put her foot down she said mere ghar mein ye nahi hoga okay it will not happen in my house very simple i cannot demand a gift okay so you know the point is and it's almost it's impossible to change cultural biases a lot of founders have come to me sir i'll market i'll spend money on marketing are boss you know these biases have been carrying on from the time of chandragupt maurya if not before that how the hell will you change it you can't so accept the fact that there are some cultural issues which you have to you have to work within those constraints so actually the size of the market was much smaller yeah. than originally anticipated because most families would not permit it very simple okay second issue uh do we have an earnings model very interesting so guests would go to the wedding gift registry site to identify what the couple wanted and then you know what they did go outside and buy sorry go the outside buy, and pick up something they got buy it from the market and gift it directly not just market boss let's go to amazon boss sasta hoga and it was cheaper why because amazon deals in bulk yeah they will arm twist vendors to get lower prices and they'll pass on at least some of the discount to the end consumer so effectively these guys they were they had no earnings model they became a discovery site so there's mm-hmm. no business correct so therefore yeah. no earnings model fundamental problem and finally do they have an entry barrier what is to prevent amazon itself from getting into it actually they have got into it just an app away they have got into it exactly right so you know what is also important is don't just look at see these guys told us amazon is not in this business that's not important what is important is if amazon decides to get into this business how easy is it for them to get in so very easily easy that's where you need an entry barrier especially against giant competitors had it been one choto they could have managed okay so no entry barrier finally they got very very low traction and couldn't get funding closed down and i'll just summarize these two three uh, areas of learning don't blindly copy the west there are fundamental differences right ensure you have an earnings model and don't get into a business where you have not only an existing competitor but a potential giant competitor okay so that's the failure story fortunately we didn't invest in them and let me just close this stop the sharing okay okay i have uh, so any questions now i'm through with the presentation component excellent uh, yeah. very very good thank you and uh, whoever said excellent will get this <laughs> so if, if i may ask this web gift, was. when was this model proposed um in india when did these guys come to us yeah yeah uh, this was okay, yes. 5 years back yeah about uh yeah. it was definitely before covid so it must have been around yeah. 2018 or yeah, early 2019 yes yeah i mean if 17. i were to give you a, a i mean my view today probably this model could appeal to a 
to a fairly larger mm-hmm. section of people uh, who probably are uh, you know taking the lead role the issue is when the parents take the lead yep. role these yep. become a cultural issue but uh, i mean you know with changes very happening valid. around very valid. very valid very valid so you're absolutely right absolutely right you need so now your segment of the you know the problem is in a wedding in indian weddings it's not one person marrying another it's one family marrying another yeah, and the cha cha taya mama bua yeah, they absolutely. have the say right the yeah. poor two two poor guys getting married <laughs> have no opinion no role it. to play but <laughs> well, that's changed <laughs> that is changing that's changing yeah so if you have a large enough market where these young people say i don't care what my parents and the elders say this is what i will do then i agree with you but that has to be a large enough market otherwise again you'll stagnate so you're right so the said customer acquisition was uh, uh, nearly impossible in the beginning stage that is why they uh, failed yes not just beginning stage at any stage but by I the way they, they used they were using a very very interesting method of customer acquisition zero cost they were using partnerships so for example the the banquet hall guys they would tell the banquet hall guys look you give us leads we will give you leads similarly the band walas you give us leads we will give you leads the florist you give us leads we will give you leads the guys who made the cards the pre card printers you give us leads we will give you leads so they had a very good exchange method of uh, cutting down cost so the economics of the business was very very solid uh, gross margins would have been very 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 good unfortunately they couldn't crack them I guess we have uh, uh, Anjali, ma'am, have raised her hand. Uh, yeah, sure. Please go so, on. Yeah. So, uh, just being confined to wedding gifts, uh, wedding gifts. Why couldn't they look at birthday gifts, Valentine gifts, housewarming gifts? So, they, you they know, could. they could see the only issue there. So they could. They said this is a possible extension tomorrow. Uh, by the way, Valentine's Day was not so popular at that time, but birthday gifts, yes, was a possibility. the only thing is birthday gift normally the value of the birthday gift is a lot less so they said this is a lower value business uh, once this is stabilized then we will go into this but a primary purpose is wedding gifts and then we'll take it from there so the starting point was wedding gifts right priyanka can i ask yeah sure sure boss okay Yeah, sure. Thank, thank you so much, Dhruv. It was wonderful. I have got to learn so many things. I message so now, you. Last so, time. are you married? Are you using this? Yes, yeah. I am married, but I am not using this. Okay. No, if you are married, okay. then it is not for you. <laughs> okay. So, last time also, I got to learn much more about entry barrier from your LinkedIn post. Ah, uh-huh. uh, I would like to understand more on entry barriers, as you said. this uh, particular startup has got the digitized content ready that could be one of the entry barrier so yeah. how do we identify more entry barriers and my second question is how do we ensure the exits okay so the second question you have to ask god but i'll <laughs> but give you something there could some be thoughts. a way the way we can understand the way to profit profitability yes. of the startups is this so we we can understand the way to the exit yeah okay fair fair okay so first of all entry barrier i'll summarize it in one statement one simple statement as long as you are doing something which is tough for the other guy to copy and will take time and potentially money you have an entry barrier okay. you built a brand that's a strong entry barrier nestle maggi is a huge entry barrier because the other guy could come up with exactly the same noodles but the kid will still say mereko maggi khana hai correct that's one two if you have a distribution network a strong distribution network across the country once again the other guy will take time to build that up that's an entry barrier if you have a solid product whether it's a software product or a hardware product or whatever which will take the other guy a lot of time to build once again that's a strong entry barrier so anything anything which will take the potential competitor a lot of time and a lot of money to build is an entry barrier but remember one thing very important here uh entry barriers are never permanent never they cannot be because the other guy can catch up right so you have to make sure today you have this entry barrier 
the other guy can catch up. So you have to keep making sure you keep going ahead, which means yeah. if you have a product, keep enhancing your product so that the other guy, when he catches up, he catches up with your older product, right? Similarly, when he catches up with your brand, your brand has become stronger or your distribution network has become stronger. So you must keep enhancing the entry barrier. Otherwise, uh, the other guy is going to catch up and kill you. Okay. So uh, secondly, regarding... Oh, Interrupting, Professor. Ah, sure, 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 sure. I think today yeah. you have an, another appointment. So I'm just reminding you, I'm happy to take the other question because Dhruv has another event. No, no, no. So I must tell you, I have to go to that prayer meeting. Uh, I'm just waiting for my car to come. The moment my car comes, uh, if you want to have, if you have more questions, I can sit in the car and take it from my phone. But right now my car you hasn't come. Send your questions to, uh, on, on the group. You can also email to uh, Priyanka. And thank you for the audience for, for being there. But continue till your car comes in. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Yeah, so sorry. Great. The other one was regarding exits. <clears throat> Guaranteed exit, not even God can give. Let's be very, very clear. Okay. And definitely no investor, no angel network can give you. But typically, there are certain norms which uh, give you a higher likelihood of getting an exit. Okay. And fundamentally, fundamentally, you have to understand what is an exit. An exit is somewhere along the line, maybe three, four, five, two years later some other investor is willing to buy your shares at a higher valuation. Yes. Correct? That's, that's it. Now, why would the second investor want to buy your shares? Because he sees a persistent business? Because even at that stage, he sees more scalability, bigger market, and he sees, okay, it's going to scale up faster. Because he sees that there is an entry barrier that you built up, and therefore you will be able to keep out competition. Because he sees founders that he has faith in. Because he sees traction. So ultimately, all the things that I've spoken about, which are good for today's investor, are also great for tomorrow's investor. Right? That is what you need to keep in mind. But yes, one thing you have to just, uh, one more thing you have to keep in mind here. Uh, there are certain things which go a little out of fashion. Okay? For example, today, EdTech. Uh, investors are not very keen to invest in wet tech because, you know, Baijus and uh, many of the other guys, they have made a bit of a mess. Okay, so investors will think twice. So, yes, you have to keep that in mind. You have to figure out whether or not, you know, this is likely to go completely out of uh, sync, out of fashion within uh, three, four years. Otherwise, as long as you constantly scale your business, as long as you constantly have a large market, as long as you constantly have your entry barrier, potentially the next investor will come. Okay. The rest, of course, is up to God. And now, not God, but let me ask uh, uh, the God of lead angel, Sushanto Mitra, to add to this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dhruv. Thanks, Dhruv. Thanks a lot. It was, you know, really a great session. And I think we will have more such sessions uh, going forward. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Drew. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Once again, apologies for the last minute time change. Uh, the recording will be available of, of the session on YouTube. I'll be sharing the link uh, with all clarify, the participants. I must clarify, clarify, my car still hasn't come, and mm -hmm. yet both of them want me to stop. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, this is the first time uh, we've gone overboard by 20 minutes and people still want to stick around. So, uh, uh, that is. You're I welcome guess, to join me. Uh, if you're in Delhi, you're welcome to join me at the prayer meeting. We'll have a long chat. <laughs> Got it. Okay, great. See you guys. And by the way, I'm available on LinkedIn in case you want to. I mean, I keep posting uh, on LinkedIn. And of course, be in touch with Priyanka. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so, so much, Dhruv. Thank my you so email much. ID and I've also dropped a Thank link you so much, uh, uh, for the books. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. Oh, okay. And make sure you get your beer and uh, Kit Kat. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll get in touch with Priyanka then. We'll uh, collect, uh, we'll I'll, you. I'll have to go on a leave now. <laughs> with all the Kit Kat and beer meals coming in. <laughs> well, if you have Thank all you so the much. beer, you will not Thank be able you. to go on leave.
you will be thank in you <laughs>